here you can see the results from the balancing. So the rotating parts, I had the crankshaft, the flywheel, the clutch cover and the engine pulley were all balanced. And these are the results of the balancing on that. So you can see on the crankshaft, fantastic results. Apparently the these results are pretty standard for Porsche crankshafts when they go in. There is nothing exceptional about this one. But you can see that the, the amount has come down from 237 down to five and from 185 down to six. So down to just, um, you know, two or three percent of what the initial imbalance was. Flywheel is down to less than 10 percent and the clutch is down to around about a 20th of what the initial imbalance was. Little difference on the pulley, but then that was obviously being much smaller and lighter. There's much less imbalance on that to start with. So I would say this is definitely worth doing for any build. It should make a big difference to the smoothness of the engine. The reciprocating parts, the rods and the pistons, they were all just matched. So the, the pistons had the pins machined to bring the weights down to the, the weight of the lightest one because they're hollow pins. So a small amount of material was taken out of there. And on the rods, as you'll see in the next part of the video, they're basically balanced for overall weight and also balanced end to end. With the balancing process all done, I now need to assemble the, the con rods onto the crankshaft. Before doing that, I've thoroughly cleaned the crankshaft. During the balancing process, obviously there's some machining work done on it, so it needs thoroughly cleaning off. So I've done that with brake cleaner and cloths. Then once that's done, it's ready to mount the con rods. So I've started at the flywheel end, worked my way up. Um, so in terms of the con rods, these have been cleaned up. If you look on on here, on the end of it, you can see on one side, just there, you can see where it's been machined. That's where the balancing has been done. So that's on the on the big ends and on the, the little ends, you can see it's been taken off around the circumference. So a very neat job on there. So there's one of them, which is this one around here. That must have been the one that was the lightest. So that one's not been touched. So all of the others have have material taken off to get the weights the same. So they're balanced um, on the little ends and on and on the big ends. So all the little ends are the same, all big ends are the same. Then in terms of fitting the, the rods, so we have the, the two halves obviously which bolt together. There's writing on one side, so you can see writing on there that will match up with the, the writing on the rest of the rod. And then that goes in with these bolts here so these are suitably lubricated on the the threads and underneath the head using this special assembly lubricant and these are the new bearing shells so they're standard size shells so the bearing shells go in dry on here and then i'll put some of this engine assembly lube on before they go in and then once they're on I'll go through the tightening procedure. With the bolts fitted loosely, they need to be torqued up. Now these are done, they're torqued to a particular stretch. So I've got the uh, pin micrometer in there. So you can see that is at 1.702 inches, looking for 5,000 stretch on these. Although to go to a maximum of not more than 40 pounds feet of torque um, from doing all of the other ones, basically it means you torque them to 40 pounds feet and then check them. So I'll just get these both torqued up to 40 pounds feet and then I'll check the measurement on them both. Torque these both up now. I do them both up to 20 first just to make sure they're well bedded down and all fine and then tighten them both up to 40. So you can see on there, that's now at 1.707. That's the 5 thou stretch and done up to correct torque. So that's all six rods in now. And that's as far as I can go before I get the crankshaft into the block. <laughs> 